Okay, this is a quick video. I'm going to show the Lakewood 550 oil heater that stopped working. Got this, I believe, on the fire sale at Walmart probably eight or nine years ago, if I had to guess, for like 20 bucks. I think they normally went back then for 40 Got 600, 900. The lights light up, and there's no heat. And it just stopped working. Uh, last used, last cooling season, uh, heating season, whatever. And here's the controls on the thing. These are the switches. These two, the red and the blue, go over here to the heater. Heating element. There's the oil plug. To get this off is real simple. It just had two screws for the foot, which were Phillips. And then it had a, um, looks like a number, a quarter inch screw, like in the back of an old radio. And this will slides off as a dovetail. Kind of a slick design. So you just slide the unit back off. So it's real easy to work on. But I'm going to buzz it out to see what's going on. I suspect if it's like other heaters I've owned, it's the thermal fuse. So let me get the meter up and we'll check it real quick. I've got the power off over here. There's where you add the oil. Okay, I've got my trusty $5 free Radio Shack meter here. Got it connected to ohms. And I've got a little clip lead with it just shorted out. And you're not going to get zero because you got the resistance of the leads so you got about six six tenths to an ohm of lead resistance and i'm going to go ahead and connect up one of these to the common down here got it unplugged of course this is the white down here and i'm going to connect up to one element there's say Subtract, it's about, say, 22 ohms. Here's the other element. Say 15 ohms. They're different because one's a 600 ohms. One's a 600 watts, one's a 900. So the heating element's good. Now, if I go in here... I suspect this is the thermal fuse in here. We're going to go from that connection to the white that's over here. One of the whites. I'm just going to try one of them. It doesn't matter which one I connect up to. Um, they're both open. In fact, there's nothing there. If I connect to any one of these whites, not even trying to trace which one it is, it doesn't move at all. So, the heating element's good. There's no connection through the thermal fuse. And maybe last time I used this, I left it on a long time and it, you know, melted the fuse. But looks like they've got a loop here. And... It's just probably sitting in here, pushed into the... I'm going to pull that out. It's probably hidden inside there. They've just got to push down here. This is loop. That's great. So inside there is probably the thermal fuse. I got in a better position to sit. I didn't even cut it off. I just went ahead and slid this around. That's just the solder joint. Here's the here's the thermal fuse. I guess I wasn't awake yet. So, of course, it's going to ohm out to the input side, and over here. There it is, it's dead. 
so wide open there it is so put the clip lead here and that lead is just of course hooking up to the black here because I don't have three hands we'll leave that in there because everybody makes mistakes so we're going to go through and read this see if I can find my what the temperature is on there okay I cheated and got my little magnifier to read the side of this thing it says 250 volts 10 amps and it says uh, 167 degrees C so this is what it says on here I know it's a thermal fuse but it says SW120T SWC 250 volts 10 amps 167 C so the most redeeming factor it's got to handle 10 amps and then the 167 degrees centigrade Celsius whatever is where the sucker melts at and what that is is basically I think a wax pellet in there so you want to get one that's going to be that temperature or even slow lower if you had to have one you put a lower temperature it'll work it just will tend to fail quicker but um, on a patent heater I bought back when the earth was cooling I got one years ago at Radio Shack actually on a hair dryer or something and I put one up that was 20 degrees C lower and it lasted for another five years until the motor burned up so um, this is an item now I'm gonna go on eBay and buy and it's just looks like it's soldered in and then here's the heat shrink sleeve that you just pull in so I didn't even cut that off so I've got to go off and procure a new thermal fuse and sometimes these things I may have set this up to be super high one day and then, you know, with time they can end up breaking. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the unit's got some weird issue. Sometimes just with time they just get to be uh, goofed up. This has been a good heater. This is the, looks like somebody's got 58 or 85, 58. Maybe that's 85 degrees. Maybe that's a calibration deal. you got a local radio shack that's still around um sometimes they have those in their piles i think they're made like 120 140 160 180 um they're really common they're pretty much in every hair dryer it's made so if you have an old hair dryer you can probably put one out but it, i want to say it's probably a lower temperature that's in there this is just a short tech tip Take the screws you took out, put them back in, just so you don't lose the dumb things. Get two Phillips. And there's the hex that's got a quarter inch on the side, I believe. Put them in so I don't lose them. In a bigger project, sometimes I use Ziploc bags. There's the foot that I took off that screws into here. So you take the foot off, and then you undo this and slide this assembly out it's dovetailed and there's the little dovetail feature of course make sure you got it unplugged you don't get zapped or something again these type of uh, thermal fuses they do sometimes with time go bad I've had an old heater that was with a fan and I've probably put two of them in over you know okay a long long time if you leave them on really long time sometimes they'll overheat or just you can get one that wasn't made right but just make sure you try to get the one with the right temperature in there got the mist on the water out there there's a crab trap up a pound on the river bank here see some minnows a little bit of frost on the roof this morning and I don't see the alligator 
alligators sometimes trolling around looking for breakfast.